Donald Trump's first criminal trial is happening March 25th. Here's a preview from a real lawyer and former federal prosecutor. This case relates to $130,000 in hush money payments made to former porn star Stormy Daniels by Trump's lawyer, Michael Cohen. Now, Trump reimbursed Cohen allegedly for these payments, and Trump is being prosecuted for categorizing those payments as legal expenses and not the hush money. So here's how we got there, and here's a preview of where we're going. This all relates to payments that were made in 2016, and there were actually two sets of payments. Those made to Stormy Daniels, but there was also $150,000 paid to former Playboy Playmate Karen McDougal. That was paid by the National Enquirer, but Cohen was involved with that payment as well. So why was the case prosecuted so late when this all happened during the 2016 presidential election? Well, the feds and the previous district attorney in Manhattan chose not to prosecute the case. The feds went after Michael Cohen though, and Cohen pled guilty to federal campaign finance violations. And the campaign finance charges are important for a reason that I'll get to in a minute. With respect to the National Enquirer, the feds entered into a non-prosecution agreement. But importantly, neither Cyrus Vance Jr., who was the district attorney in Manhattan, or federal prosecutors decided to prosecute Trump. And there was some disagreement about that. In fact, uh, one of Vance's high deputies famously resigned and sent a letter to him saying that he was being treated differently because he was a president. A new district attorney took over in Manhattan. His name is Alvin Bratt, and he decided to prosecute the case. And that's important because he went against the decision of his predecessor, but importantly, he was the first person ever to prosecute a former president. And that opened the door for others like Special Counsel Jack Smith and Fulton County District Attorney Bonnie Willis, who followed suit. So this case, let's get into some of the charges. There, there are 34 charges approximately related to different types of false business records, but Here's a couple important things to note, and the most important is this. Under New York law, false business records, they're only a misdemeanor unless they're in furtherance of or to cover up another crime, in which case they become a felony. So prosecutors in this case have been really trying to argue that the payments to Stormy Daniels, they're actually an unlawful campaign contribution. And here's the argument. Anything that a presidential candidate or other candidate receives during the course of a campaign that benefits him or her and benefits the campaign is considered a campaign contribution. So the argument is, well, the payments to Stormy Daniels were to keep the story quiet to benefit his presidential campaign. Trump has a couple defenses in this case. First was a statute of limitations. Now, normally there's a two-year statute in New York for misdemeanors, a five-year statute for felonies. He's raised this argument because the charges were filed approximately six years later. But New York has a tolling statute, which says that if you're out of the state, the statute doesn't run. And of course, Trump was living in Washington, D.C. when he was president. But aside from the statute of limitations, Trump has two defenses that I think he's going to raise at trial. One is going to be that the payments to Michael Cohen were actually for legal expenses. And that would be a true defense in the case because then the business records wouldn't be false, wouldn't be a misdemeanor or a felony. But I think he may pursue the second defense in this case and say that, yeah, I made the payments to Stormy Daniels through Michael Cohen, but the payments had nothing to do with the campaign. They were payments to protect my family from embarrassment. I didn't want to embarrass my wife, Ivanka, especially during um, a presidential race. And that argument may actually resonate with jurors and is something Trump has actually talked about on social media. So the business records were false but they were made to protect his family and had nothing to do with the campaign. That reduces the charges from a felony to a misdemeanor. Either way, regardless of what happens, because it's the least serious of the four criminal cases, even if Trump is convicted, I don't think he's gonna serve much jail time. But it will affect his campaign because he's gonna have to spend approximately five or six weeks, according to the judge's estimate, in a New York courtroom facing these charges and not on the campaign trail. Well, this is a case that we're going to be following closely and there'll be a lot more updates. So please make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications.